If you've been following me this year, you know that I have a boyfriend. If you haven't been following me this year and this is one of the first videos that you're watching of me, I'm dating while deaf. I'm in a deaf hearing relationship. You're probably thinking, what does you being deaf have to do with having a boyfriend and what does your boyfriend being hearing have to do with you being deaf? I get it, I get it. A common concern that I've read from other deaf and hard of hearing people and one that I've always had myself is, how is this going to affect my dating life? With Deaf, deaf relationships is easy. We have the same struggles, so we understand each other. If we don't understand what the other person is saying or signing, we don't feel as nervous as to what the outcome will be because we get it. We often get worried that if we're constantly misunderstanding someone we're interested in, or if we're constantly asking them to repeat themselves, they're going to get frustrated and stop showing interest. Sometimes they stop showing interest the moment that the D word or the word hard of hearing comes up. That's not always the case, but right now, that's the case I'm talking about. The truth is, there's always going to be a bit of a disconnect when it comes to deaf hearing relationships. It's not bad and it's not anyone's fault, it's just the way that it is. I'm currently reading a book called Finding Zoe and Brandy, the author, talked about her relationship with the hearing guy and how the relationship was great. But as Brandy started getting more into deaf culture, the boyfriend was not getting the same connection that she was, obviously. And because of that, they grew apart and Brandy ended the relationship. No matter how involved someone is in deaf culture, whether they take in deaf studies, have a family member who's deaf, etc., a hearing partner will never understand what it's like being deaf and what comes with it. I've liked people in the past and every time I always worried about how the other person was going to take the fact that I'm deaf. I didn't have a lot of friends here and I still don't. So I did a lot of online dating or signing up to dating websites like OkCupid. I even used Tinder once upon a time and I never knew how to explain that deafness was a part of me because I didn't want people to be turned off by it and I didn't know what would happen if I ever met somebody off of one of those sites. This is a common feeling a common worry. I see posts with the same thoughts on Tumblr every once in a while. So it's no secret that my boyfriend is hearing. If you were to ask me if I had any worries about him being hesitant with my ears, the answer would actually be no. Because he knew I existed before I knew he existed, so he knew that part about me already. Thank you, YouTube. I remember Skyping with each other for the first time after we knew each other for a couple of days and I was very nervous. I'm always very nervous when I try to Skype with people using a voice call. During our first Skype call, I couldn't understand him at all, so I had him type the entire call, and I got nervous about it because I thought that it would be an inconvenience to him. Yes, I can talk about accommodating deaf and hard of hearing people until I'm blue in the face, but sometimes I get nervous about it. It took some getting used to, but after a couple of Skype calls, I started getting used to how he sounds, and now I can understand him pretty well over Skype, most of the time. So that's online, and then you in person and the fear comes back a little because people can sound different in person. Like to me, my voice sounds much deeper in video but more high in person and my deaf accent comes out more in videos whereas my southern accent comes out more in person. I don't know how that works but anyway. So Devin in person has a deeper voice online but in person it's higher, to me anyway. So on the first day that we met in person, I had not only a meeting in person for the first time worries, but also how the fuck is communication gonna work out worries. Five months later, we're still doing pretty awesome. So while it is true that a lot of deaf hearing relationships don't work out due to a disconnect, cultural differences, communication barriers, etc. There are deaf hearing relationships that do work out. For proof, some hearing partners will start to learn about deaf culture and some will not. I have read about a couple of deaf hearing relationships and the communication was all oral and that sometimes is what some deaf people prefer. As I've said before, not all of us communicate in the same way. Some of us 
sign. Not everyone signs. But someone who does use sign language as their main way of communicating can be worried or sad if their partner has or continues to have no interest in being involved with that culture or learning their way of communicating. If it was me, I would say goodbye. But for some, they will continue to stick it out. Hearing partners, if you are in a deaf hearing relationship and your partner's main way of communicating is sign language, I highly encourage you to try to learn it, even if it's just the basics. Even the smallest amount will make your partner very, very happy. Moving on to less immediate family. My biggest deaf hearing relationship fear is being around my boyfriend's immediate family because of communication barriers. I don't and will never do well with large groups of people. There's too much going on, it's all oral, and I can't keep up. To clarify, I don't dislike them, I just get petrified or things of them. I've also never been involved with my family, so I just get nervous being around people and their family members. I don't know how to function around family, especially very close ones. Explaining to your hearing family that you have a deaf partner can be very nerve-wracking because you don't know what to expect if they've never been around a deaf person for longer than 30 seconds before. In the Taiwanese movie Hear Me, Jim Kwa tells his hearing family that Yang Yang is deaf. They kind of freak out a little bit because they have no idea how they're gonna communicate. When they all meet, they already have like a message written on a gigantic notebook and it's a beautiful moment. That doesn't always happen in real life. Sometimes, but not always. You never know what to expect and you don't want to look like the asshole at the dinner table on Easter because you have no idea what's going on and what's being said. So you follow your boyfriend around like a helpless puppy. Everything worked out pretty well that day and it was very fun, but so it's a very common worry for a lot of us. So again, while there are deaf hearing relationships that don't work out due to a disconnect, cultural differences, communication barriers, etc., there are deaf hearing relationships that do work out. As someone who has experienced deaf hearing friendships and has been deaf for quite some time now, I understand when another deaf person gets hesitant and would feel more comfortable being in a deaf deaf relationship. Before getting into this kind of relationship, I definitely definitely suggest talking about it and making sure everyone's on the same page as far as how to communicate, what you're getting involved with as far as culture goes. It's like with interracial relationships, I think. You need to understand that your partner has been living with a lot of challenges in life and that has made them a part of who they are. When stuff happens, like issues with equal rights and stuff, you need to sit down and listen. Don't talk over and think that you know more when you haven't lived that life. Just show patience and learn. Be open to learning and getting involved. I will see you later. Bye.